Thanks for joining me for this review on using the Rilo 360 camera. I'm not an expert, I've just learned a few things. If you've got an iPhone and Mac, watch my first review on workflow with a 360 camera. One thing that you must have, you must start with, is a bigger SD card. I cover this in my early review, but I'm revisiting it because the card I got was not supported by Rilo and I lost a ton of important footage. Rilo only supports SanDisk. Whatever card you get, make sure it's SanDisk. You don't wanna lose footage like I did. On to editing and workflow. When selecting something to follow or a viewpoint, make sure there's space between them. For example, if you're following something, stop the following, let the video play for a beat, and then select a viewpoint so there's a little bit of space between them. This will prevent your view from jumping. If you leave space, the camera will pan. And the second point, you can control the speed of the camera angle panning by varying the space between the selected viewpoints. The more the space, the slower the camera is going to pan. The smaller the space, the faster it's going to pan. Now, sometimes what I've found is the the viewpoint will be slowly pulling, and that's just because you've added a viewpoint down the timeline, and it's pulling towards that really slowly. You can stop the slow pulling by adding more viewpoints, but it's still gonna pull after all those. So if you go all the way forward to the one you've added, put the viewpoint where you want it just before, and it'll be at that view. Now the follow option can be fickle. If you're choosing something to follow, it can lose it really easily. Unless the subject is passing by, just use the look here option instead and create a viewpoint. Now, if the subject you're following comes out of center, just create another viewpoint. Let the camera roll. If they come out of center, say the trail is moving, Pause, select a viewpoint to pull them back to center. That'll create more of a steady camera angle type situation. In my previous review on workflow with the Rilo, I talk about doing a hardline batch import through photos. I had so much footage with this latest episode of Weekly Ride that I got confused of what clips were what clips. Doing a batch import all at the same time when you're completely done editing, for me, keeps things less confusing. The last thing I learned is the need for an iPad. There were 46 clips I needed to edit. It took me two days and I was on this tiny little screen. The Rilo iOS software works with the iPad. If you have one, use your iPad instead. The bigger screen has gotta be so much better. In review, SD card, SanDisk only. Editing, Leave space between your viewpoints to prevent the camera angle from jumping. You can control the speed at which the viewpoint pans by varying the space between your viewpoints. Follow can be fickle. Use the look here option unless your subject is passing by. Workflow with the Mac, do your batch import all at once when you're done editing. Don't break it up, it gets too confusing. And lastly, iPad is better for editing your 360 clips. I'll share more as I learn more. For now, thanks for watching. Be sure to check out my latest episode of Weekly Ride and see the 360 camera in action. Thanks again.